If you have questions or suggestions for future podcasts, please submit them in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Economic sanctions. Hi, I'm Dave Arnott, the Christian economist. I'm beginning today's podcast by citing three books that made the same prediction. First, The Commanding Heights by Jurgen and Stanislav tell the history of economics and politics throughout the entire 20th century. The story begins in 1900 with most of the world enjoying free market capitalism. In mid-century, many countries moved to a more socialist economy. By 2000, they had mostly moved back to free market economies. The book was made into a three-part video series in 2002. When the story closes, they reassure the viewer that the world have established free market capitalism that will probably endure. Then the very last line in an eerie predictor of the events of the last few days of February 2022. More about that in a minute. The second book is called The World is Flat, which you've probably heard of. It's by Thomas Friedman. He makes essentially the same assumption in his book that was published in 2005, that the world has become flat and that individuals trading across the globe will make all of us richer. History tells us when one country knocked off its neighbor to extend the border of its victorious country. So in our third book in the introduction today, it's called The End of History and the Last Man by Francis Fukuyama. He observed in 2006 that the world had moved almost exclusively to political democracies and economic free market capitalist systems. Thus, he predicted there would be no more wars because they interrupt economic growth. Mr. Fukuyama did not consider the Christian worldview. See, people are still fallen. And while there was a very nice period of relative peace in the world, war would return. And now it has. Back to that first book I mentioned. In the video version, the voiceover is done by David Ogden Stiers who my generation remembers as Dr. Winchester in the TV series MASH. With the world safely ensconced in political democracies and economic free market capitalism, in the very last line of the video program, he leans into the microphone and intones, but who knows what will happen, come economic hardship or a world war? Now we know the world did not remain solidly in the free market capitalist category. Russia's invasion of the Ukraine stunned much of the world, but not those of us who understand the Christian worldview. Because when we read The Commanding Heights in 2002, The World is Flat in 2005, and The End of History in 2006, we knew those authors were not looking at the world through the lens of reality. In economics, we call their view normative. That means the way they want the world to be. Christian economists see the world as it is, and that's fallen. In economics, we call that positive economics. The Cold War. Look, the West won the Cold War via economics. Referring again to Commanding Heights by Jurgen and Stanislav, they tell the fascinating story of a guy named Oleg Gordievsky. He was a double agent who was squired out of Russia in the trunk of a car across the Finnish border. The next day in London, when agents asked him about military power, he directed their attention to the economy, which was cratering under socialism, as all economies do. This message was sent to President Reagan, who cooked up a wild idea that was called Star Wars. He talked about an idea to put satellites into space that would shoot down any missile launched on the Earth. But he never planned to build it. He knew the Russian economy had dealt them a bad hand. And he was playing poker using the pile of chips produced by the free market capitalist economy in the United States. Okay. He also sent his vice president, George H.W. Bush, to ask the Saudis to flood the world market with oil, driving down the price. That's how we won the Cold War, by decreasing Soviet income from oil and increasing their expenditures on the military. Reagan won the poker game. The poker chips he used were produced by the parents and grandparents of my Dallas Baptist University students who went to work every day and outproduced the Russians in the American free 
market economy. Russia. The Biden administration made a strategic economic mistake by approving the Nord Stream 2 pipeline that ships natural gas from Russia to Germany. Russia provides 10% of the fuel consumed by the EU as a whole and 30% that's consumed by Germany. It, it was pretty easy to see that becoming dependent upon your hostile neighbor is not a good idea. Look, I've been teaching in Lithuania every summer for the last eight years. This little country of less than 3 million people took the opposite approach from Germany. They built a liquefied natural gas terminal in the Baltic port city of Klaipeda, which receives LNG from the United States. Oh, one of my former students is the operations manager. In retaliation, Russia diverted train traffic from the port of Klaipeda in Lithuania to their home port of St. Petersburg to economically punish the Lithuanians. Now, the Russians ship their goods about 200 miles further north by train to the port of St. Petersburg, where they have to use massive icebreakers to keep the port open in the winter. That means an increase in cost for the Russians and a decrease in economic activity for the Lithuanians. Now, today, that decision seems pretty insightful and forward-looking by the Lithuanians. Canada. The economic sanctions that are being enacted against the Russian economy provide an example of the power of economics to keep world peace. I unpack more historical details in my podcast number 47, titled Economics and World Peace. There's another kind of sanction going on in Canada. It is carefully explained by Jeffrey Tucker, writing in the Epoch Times. The truckers in Canada deployed the crowdfunding platform GoFundMe and raised $9 million. But then the platform said that it wouldn't distribute the money, pending the release of a clear plan on what the truckers were going to do with it. A few days later, GoFundMe announced that it wouldn't give the money to the truckers, but rather to other charities of their choosing. In other words, it would steal the money. That outraged many people, among them Elon Musk, and the internet blew up in fury. At that point, GoFundMe returned all the money to the donors. In the next act of this drama, the truckers went to Give, Send, Go, a platform that seems more independent and that pledged to give the money to the truckers. See, the data on donors was leaked to the government and then to the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation and handed over to the Canadian government, where the Minister of Finance declared that anyone using these systems to provide funding to the truckers was engaging in an illicit activity, essentially terrorism, as they called it. Without missing the beat, the Minister of Justice for Prime Minister Justin Trudeau went further to declare that anyone who has given large figures of money through these platforms should be worried about having their bank accounts frozen. So there we have it on record. The Canadian government has declared that it can freeze anyone's bank account and seize the contents based on their political views or charitable actions. Okay, here's the point. Economic sanctions can be used for good, like the Russian example, or for ill, as in the Canadian example. That does not surprise Christian economists, because we've assumed all along that anything God created for good can be twisted and used for ill by humans. We're seeing both examples. Adam Smith wrote about that in The Wealth of Nations in 1776. Yes, <laughs> that guy. He got his face on the back of the 20-pound note in the UK for that contribution. A recent video series is by one of my favorite economists, Johann Norberg. The title is The Real Adam Smith, Ideas That Changed the World. In the introduction, Norberg says, a man who lived in an era of sailing ships and horse-drawn carriages imagined our world today. He did. Norberg is right. We're all richer because of the specialization given to us by Adam Smith in The Wealth of Nations in 1776. Specialization has gone global. A personal example. I was visiting with an executive from Toyota last week who explained that the reason for the shortage of computer chips for cars goes all the way back to Adam Smith, because chip making has specialized. 
there are only about three manufacturers that supply all the automakers in the world. So when something goes wrong with their supply chain, all the automakers are put on hold. EU founding. The European Union began as a coal and steel trading union whose purpose was to avoid World War III. In 1951, the founders, and I credit Robert Schumann of France, but other people credit other people, he looked back at two world wars that had decimated the continent and tried to lay out a plan to avoid the next world war. They started with coal and steel because that's what's used to make the weapons of war. I think future wars will be more based on economics and cyber attacks, but that's not my subject today, so let me get back to my topic. Here's the point. The EU has worked. None of its 27 members have attacked each other. Well, now that's mostly because Germany, who started both world wars in the 20th century, produces 30% of the GDP in the, in the European Union, and they are greatly enriched by their very successful export economy, which sends mostly machine products to the other 26 members of the EU. Okay, I'll close today's podcast by returning to my first subject, the Christian worldview. See, we believe that humans are fallen, and will continue to be so. So our quest is to find a way to channel fallen activity in a way that grows economies and extends peace. International trade via free market capitalism is the answer until the Lord returns. I'm Dave Arnott, the Christian Economist. Fear God, tell the truth, earn a profit. See you next time. For more information, please visit us online at DaveArnott.com. If you have questions or suggestions for future podcasts, please submit them online or in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.